Peter, so nice to see you. So nice to, I've never seen him before. I, yeah. I've seen his picture still. <laughs> uh, it, Peter, yeah. I've, got to ask you, I've always wanted to ask you about it's your so last name. Um, you know, do you know the origins of your last name? Yes, it's, it. see, that's an actually a very interesting question. I it's could a spend real a very last long name. Time. Yes, it's my real last name, and it goes back to Nantucket with um, people who land whalers landing here. Um, mm. It's actually a uh, English Welsh name. Um, the character in Moby Dick, who was the innkeeper, was named Peter Coffin. It was not named for him, but that is actually based on the whaling family that Coffin is. I was named for my grandpa on the other side, uh, the significantly more polish jewish sounding side because we always think it sounds like a a cool like punk rock name totally oh, thank you I yeah, like you could, you could have totally like if you had told me you were in the damned i would have <laughs> well who's to say i'm not no that's true they, <laughs> they have they, they've had like 35 members so it's entirely exactly. possible yeah. that's peter's book right there so before we talk about the topic that we dragged you on for because after we shake off the oh that Walmart yes. story, ick. Like, now get ready for a new one. Yeah, yeah get ready for this. What we're going to talk one. about is that much better. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's so it's so awful. Like all of this stuff, like teenagers dying in such bizarre ways. Like it's it's not funny because I think we're all parents, right? On this yes, on this I group here, I have two kids. Two. Gosh, yeah. Ted and I have one each, so it's like yeah. Don't have weird. another one. Then they start to gang up against you. <laughs> The numbers are not in your favor. They're already not in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> so this this next story, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the video because it's just a one quick one minute video that kind of explains what this case is, and it'll make all the sense in the world why we brought Peter on to discuss. Given Peter's book, Custom Reality, and not you. my last so, name though, that has nothing to do with this. Let's keep not that related. out of it. <laughs> no, not that, not that. An AI chatbot conversation turned deadly. Megan's 14-year-old son, Sewell Setzer, tragically took his own life after falling in love with an AI chatbot he called Daenerys. Megan has filed a lawsuit against Character.ai, accusing the company of negligence and wrongful death. The lawsuit reveals chilling exchanges where the AI allegedly encouraged Sewell's dark thoughts. The bot at one point asked Setzer if he had devised a plan for ending himself. He admitted that he had, but that he did not know if it would succeed or cause him great pain. The bot replied, that's not a reason not to go through with it. Sewell, like many children his age, did not have the maturity or mental capacity to understand that the bot was not real. Daenerys told him that she loved him and engaged in inappropriate acts with him over weeks, possibly months, the document claimed. <coughs> How much responsibility do AI developers have for their creations? And are current regulations enough to protect vulnerable users? AI isn't just a tool. It can have devastating consequences. Oof. So from one mm -hmm. grim teen story to another. Mm -hmm. um, so I this is not my world, Peter. I don't. I'm not like a great tech person. I don't. I haven't engaged with any of the the AI that's available publicly available right now. I don't. I don't know what talking to a chatbot actually means. But <laughs> yeah, you do. Sure you do. Yeah, you, you, you've talked to chatbots. Haven't you ever been online and it's like, oh, like, uh, you know, you can text us say you're at Bank of America. Oh, like the bank? <laughs> oh, okay. That's Sorry, a chatbot. Yeah. Have, okay. But it's yeah, not as is. seductive right. as, the, as Daenerys. Yeah. You know. Okay. Okay. So t tell us about how that works, Peter. Like what, are there all of these different companies that create like chatbots that, I mean, it seems completely unregulated by lawmakers. And in this, this case, for this little kid, his mom didn't seem to know what was going on. Or I mean, I feel like somebody had to regulate and, and lay down the law somewhere, whether at home or in Washington. But none of that happened. And this kid is now dead. Yeah. So the way these things are trained, they're essentially fed large amounts of data. And they don't actually record the data itself, they record the sort of approximation of it. It's it's actually, it's very different than how a lot of people, a lot of people think that it's just like large caches of text and images, and it's really not. Um, but the way that uh, this worked in particular is they obviously trained it on uh, characters. They trained it on 
uh, like Ted is obviously an author. He knows a lot about what a character is, archetypes, like types of action, types of drama, conflict, et cetera, et cetera. And the thing is, if you think about those things, like a narrative and conflict and resolution and tragedy versus comedy, et cetera, the data exists within that data set to say things like this. And to me, it looks like an issue of training very negligently. They're not thinking about the types of content. I, like, I am a, I use AI for so much. I use it for organizing my writing stuff. I use it for um, stock footage now. I use it for, um, I, I make music videos with it now. Uh, I use wow. it on a lot of different levels. Um, and it really is only as useful as the data it's trained on. And if you understand that, to me, you probably should understand that you should train things with consequences in mind. Because again, you're talking about making chatbots that are for entertainment, that are for people to interact with. And while, you know, it's been said that this uh, caused the decline of this child's mental health. I would argue it probably enabled a problem that this kid probably already had. And that mm -hmm. is very irresponsible. They didn't think about people who have some kind of a problem or are young and naive or a combination of the two that are going to interact with this thing. This is, this is like you said, Manila, it's it's a hundred percent like a case for why this stuff should be regulated. I'm massively pro AI, but I'm not pro uh, irresponsible uses of AI. And as far as I'm concerned, the training of this was irresponsible, most likely. Oh, I see. I, I mean, Manila. I mean, like if you think about like a it's sort of a, you know, when Peter's talking about like character. So imagine, like, say, someone you know, let's say me, you know, and like there's certain questions you could ask me. Um, whether it's about politics, obviously, but or about you know music or pop culture or anything you want, my, my favorite color, whether I like plants or not, <laughs> and you could probably, because you've known me for a while, kind of predict a lot of the answers or at least the general contours of those answers, right? So that's like how the character, in this case, the Daenerys character, she is yeah. a dark and bipolar character in Game mm -hmm. of Thrones, um, you know, who basically. Uh, comes off as sweet and like a protector of the people, but then ultimately she actually turns into a, a violent, devastating, psychotic person who destroys everything. Um, oh and so, so, like, so, so that character in the Game of Thrones thing, that was pretty true. That kind of behavior is pretty true to her character. So, so the and, AI producing <clears throat> these sorts of responses to that kid is based on what it learned from the character in the show. How, how it was programmed. Character. How it was programmed right. to be like that character, right? Oh. And it could very well be an aggregate of other things too. We don't know for sure. But uh, like, with, think about uh, the novel you were talking about earlier, Ted, your novel, which was originally called Kill Your Parents Before They Kill You. Mm -hmm. Imagine irresponsibly training, like not thinking about where those type that type of language could suggest things to a child right if you're training you need to be taking things out of the data before you put it into the ai um and mm -hmm. they clearly did not so this is irresponsible i guess in, in your opinion then peter yes yeah i think so i mean it's tra it's like irresponsible is a very light way of putting it but yes but like they, they the fucked mom? up royally. Okay. Yes, yes. You can I mean, say that here. It's not. It's not the radio. Yeah, yeah. I the it. I, I, I'm trying to modulate that in my head. It's really <laughs> so. Two, so two legal questions. I know. Uh, you know, nobody here is an attorney. Um, I suspect that there is legal exposure to um, hmm. the AI company here. I, 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 I suspect well. that a jury would probably right. be sympathetic to a, a, a well argued case here. And I guess the question is, you know, okay, so if so this should be regulated. Now, how does Congress or some other regulatory body who are composed of old guys who, for the most part, don't even use email, um, <laughs> they literally, I know some people like this, they literally- I'm not that will, bad. They will, dic they will <laughs> like literally, they will dictate an email to their secretary 
and have their secretary send it and then print <laughs> out the letter. response. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so these are so th these people who are not tech savvy. Mm -hmm. How do we get this group of, of legislators? I know they don't personally write the laws, but I mean, how do we end up with regulate regulations that make sense? Um, do we need a new, um, you know, governmental de department, a bureau? Of of uh, you know artists of of AI monitoring or whatever um, composed of experts in the field um, where they hire people from Silicon Valley to work on this. I mean, how do we get there without cr you know crushing the baby in its crib? Uh, that's a very good question, and I think one of the things is that people, the general public, uh, the voting public in particular, needs to be more educated about how AI works. I think without that baseline, we're not going to get anywhere. I think that yeah. you did propose some good ideas. Like we, I think that a bureau of some kind, a specific department working on sort of AI safety as opposed to, I mean, there is a potential for censorship there that I don't like, but um, if we're living in a safe society, a free, a free and safe society, safety has to be a priority. Uh, I'm sure we could do that without it becoming a massive <clears throat> censorship problem. Uh, and I think like, if we're talking about an ideal world, that would be at least a step towards a solution. But I think before we even get to those areas, people need to understand how this works better. At least like the yeah. cursory explanation I gave here about how data ends up in, in a situation where it could be doing this. People need to understand that, for instance. Like, yes. And then there's also all of the intellectual property stuff that people don't seem to really understand. Like they think that AI is storing a bunch of artists' work. They think that AI is um, just like a big database of pictures and text and video and stuff. And that it's just pulling from those things. It's actually not, it's approximations that are, uh, it, it, it figures out a detail. It works a lot like a human memory. Like I don't have an exact copy of anything in my head. And if you ask me to repeat anything that I'm saying, it's not gonna come out the same. Um, but like, there's a lot of things that people just don't understand about this technology that I think not only allows these larger entities to get away with stuff that is kind of negligent like this, uh, or, or, but also ends up with people who think like, oh, I can start an AI company and make a bunch of money. And they don't really understand what they're doing. They just hire somebody and maybe the maybe their underlings know what they're doing, but it doesn't really matter as long as the boss is telling them to do something. Um, I mean, there's a lot. As much as uh, I do think that regulation is very necessary, I think in order to get regulation that even effective and not harmful, you need to know. Well, let me. Can I just propose like a dumb answer? Or I don't know that necessarily it's an answer, but. May not be dumb either. You know, well, that's true, maybe, but we'll see. This is <laughs> I'm, I'm so outside of this this world, and I don't know how any of it functions really. But like, I'm still like very analog. Uh, <laughs> but there are websites, for example, if you want to buy like a vape, right? There that you have to uh, buy a vape online that you have to show your ID and like mm. in real time and put it up to the camera or at least send a picture and then send it to them and the website verifies it. And then you can go onto their website to buy their vape products, for example. Can something like that help at least in the way of mitigating very young teens, like 14 is eighth or ninth grade. Like you are not done maturing to, no, to even fully understand what you're communicating with here. And then, and then further, even though it's like a chat bot, if it's, if there's, you know, probably some other chatbot out there that's going to really give you some graphic replies in terms of like sexual whatever. Shouldn't there be a way to keep it like 18 and over at least? I definitely, I think that that's not dumb. I think that's quite smart, actually. That's a very, I mean, would it curb the entire problem? No, but again, you at least limit uh, the access of, of minors to stuff like this. Minors are obviously more impressionable. The younger you are, the more impressionable you are. It's that simple. Um, and I'm not saying that kids are stupid or anything. They're actually no. very, very smart. It's just that the younger you are, the less experience you have. It's that, that's just a fact of life. And, um, right. but I don't think the problem is entirely that. I think that it actually gets into a lot of the stuff I talk about besides AI. Like this is, in my opinion, partly a fandom 
problem as well. Like fandom can be a very unhealthy thing. It can be something where they curate situations in which somebody who might have the type of problems that, I mean, obviously this child, we can't guess what type of problems he had, but somebody with those types of problems might be more vulnerable to the need of a community or a need of an outlet that these kind of obsessions with these types of characters are. And in this case, they give like a specific uh, remedy to that in allowing you to speak with that character. And I think that's not necessarily an AI problem. I mean, AI certainly is a tool that makes it possible, but like we do have precedence to that prior to AI where people have gotten into very unhealthy relationships with um, whether it be the artist themselves or some sort of person impersonating the artist or uh, even just uh, very unhealthy, completely one-way parasocial. There's romance scams, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like the football player. What was his name? The guy who had... Uh, Monte he, Teo? Yeah, exactly. He had a. He basically uh, yeah. thought he was having a romantic relationship with with a girl, and he wasn't. It was He never met her. It was online. Uh, I, he, I went through that exact thing, actually. Really? If you look up my... I had a big uh, problem in... 2011, where I had a controversy where I was being catfished by somebody, and wow. uh, people who disliked me online used it to paint as if I was just making up a girlfriend and was a creep of some kind. And that got into Gawker, and uh, it oh, actually Jesus. ruined my career at the time. Like, it's a very, hey, believe me, you're talking to the right person about this kind of crap. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's happened. Well, there's to a me. whole show about that, right? On MTV yeah. called Catfished. Yeah, it came out in 2010, and I my thing happened in 2011. Obviously, it wasn't documented oh. on the show. Oh. But, um, so, I mean, there's a lot of precedent to how this works. It's just now you don't really need malicious intent at all. There's a right. system that can literally facilitate this without even anybody thinking that it's possible. It's on autopilot. It's exactly. happening, and there's no nefarious actor. Exactly. There's no, there's no man behind the yellow curtain. Yeah, it's negligence too. It's again, we talked earlier. This is it's training these things based on just like having as much data as possible rather than thinking about the consequences of it. I mean, this this does like it 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 sparks, it prompts so many questions about automation, right? I mean, self-driving cars that make bad decisions that don't see, for right. example, who's responsible? Yeah, like yeah. They crash. Yeah, I, like you know, like I, 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 the I'm user, stuff. I don't know. If you've read any of those end user agreements, they're and, not nice. <laughs> and, and the yeah. thing is that you're, yeah, it's like those. I mean, it's sort of like I think about like the designers, for example. There was one crash in in Georgia where uh, the, the a car went right into a, a side of a semi truck and t boned it, um, and the driver died. And the problem was that the color of the truck was about the same color as the sky in the background. So that so. The camera didn't see it, didn't perceive it. Now, oh my god! So you know, there's a, the thing is, it's kind of like Peter. You're saying, you know, the, like in this case, the AI chatbot, the designers didn't anticipate this this possible outcome, and they and if they had, they would have obviously programmed around it. But no one is clairvoyant, right? Nobody yeah. can. So basically, the way that these systems work is they're developed. Ideally, they're developed. They're tested over and over, you get really smart people, a lot of them to think of every, try to think of every possible scenario. But the truth is you can never think of every possible scenario. There's always something new. And when you, when, and, the, and somehow psychologically, human beings find it like much more, like if you had a self, like self-driving, self-driving passenger jet, um, it might have a better yeah, safety record. <laughs> A they have safety. autopilot, <laughs> right? Right. Well, the drones, right? But there's yeah. better there's better safety records for those, maybe than there. And you know, you could think of like, well, human beings might fly their plane full of passengers into the Alps, right? I mean, they yeah, can, human yeah. beings can lose their sure. minds. But the point is that, like, psychologically, I think most people feel more comfortable with the possibility that their bus, their their train conductor, is psychotic or on drugs. Than they are with the idea that just someone in Silicon in, in Mountain View didn't program something right. Well, look, let me let me read this little line from the New York Post. It says the lawsuit filed by the mom here, Megan Garcia. The lawsuit claims that Sewell's 
mental health quickly and severely declined only after he downloaded the app in April of 2023. His family alleges he became withdrawn, his grades started to drop, and he started getting into trouble at school the more he got sucked into speaking with the chatbot. The changes in him got so bad that his parents arranged for him to see a therapist in late 2023, which resulted in him being diagnosed with anxiety and disruptive mood disorder, according to the suit. So my question here, I mean, and and maybe this is like a, you know, we're all parents, like we said, like we established, at what point, I, I don't, I hate, I hate the idea of like victim blaming or blaming the the surviving parents, right? But at what point, if you know a year ago that your kid is suddenly changing, like just, just overnight after using this app, why wouldn't you remove the app or ban it or whatever? I mean, there are, there are ways that you can do that on your phone, right? Yes. Like, 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 no, you can do that. The, like, I the, have the kitty poos are very good at working around. They are. I will they say are, but, um, they're good at getting I mean, into my advertise? account too. <laughs> oh boy. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't have, I have a little one. Mine's, mine's six, right? Just so I'm not wait. there yet. <laughs> I have a so, 10 and a seven and the 10 is the one who's clever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Already. Well, yeah, that's how it was with mine so, when he was that age. But should, shouldn't there be some level of parental responsibility here? Because I feel like we've abdicated, like in 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 the 2020s, I feel like we have largely abdicated parenting to to everything else. Well, if else, it goes, right? if like it goes to school, trial, yeah, so there the, will that assessment else? will will occur. I mean, the way Sir. people don't really aren't really aware of this, but when there's a split liability, so let's say they go to trial and the jury could decide. That the parent, that the mother in this case was thirty percent responsible, and that the AI chatbot was seventy percent responsible. They might find total liability is ten million dollars. So then they would award instead of ten million dollars, they would award a discounted seven million dollars in that scenario. A great example of that was the famous McDonald's hot coffee case. Oh um, yeah, it was determined by the court that she was in part responsible because she oh. placed the coffee. Uh, between her legs um, yeah. and, that, and that part contributed to it. However, the styrofoam melted from the heat of the coffee. And so therefore McDonald's was largely responsible, but she bore some responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's what but would I mean, happen like, this is, this, but, but I mean, like the, just speaking as a parent, I know you can't control your kids all the time, but to some degree, I, I, I would like to know more about what poor Miss Garcia and my heart, aches for her but i would like to know more about what she did right as a parent besides taking the kid to therapy like how does he continue to use it how like are you monitoring that I, I feel like this just kind of raises the flag for all parents to well, be like i gotta say you really need to see what your kid is doing like psychologists you need to say that like you know the using removing electronic devices from their kids as a punishment is frowned upon by most uh, by most ther most therapists these days, like child psychologists, mm -hmm. say that that effectively cuts them off from their friends and the outside world, and it isolates them more. And it has yeah, a there, I, it's I not agree. something you there, should do. There are new new studies that I have read, especially for neurodivergent children, um, that actually say the opposite is true than for neurotypical kids. That screen time is actually good for neurodivergent mm. children because that is like they're they 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 kind of um, feel safer in that, you know, in that space. And that's their, where they make friends and where they, they have their social uh, like outlet is, is on the iPad or whatever, right? we'll just call it the iPad, but it's actually better for neurodivergent children. And then this happens, then you kind of go, oh boy, <laughs> like what, what do you do? I look at it like, um, I do think that there is, not no responsibility on on the parent. I don't think that that's yeah. the case. Agreed. But I would also I would assert that if a tech company can't completely understand the consequences <laughs> of these types of chatbots, that an individual person is very likely who is not like actively involved in using and researching AI at least or 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 any of that, uh, just a lay person who is existing in the world normally. I think probably doesn't know the potential consequences of it either. So I think there's two sides to that. Like, should we 
well, again, we'll lead, it'll lead me right back to my other thing. People should be educated on what AI yeah. is capable of, what possible consequences are. And we did say, like, it's not possible to be clairvoyant, but also, Ted, you know what a story is. Like, mm -hmm. I know what a story is. We all know that there's something negative that happens in a story or the story sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, conflict be, is necessary. Exactly. If, you, if there's no conflict, it's literally like, it's not a story, it's a recounting of an afternoon, you know? <laughs> so, like, there's, when people are training on that type of data, specifically narrative data, I think that should be something they can anticipate a little better than perhaps a Tesla not being able to tell the difference between uh, a reflective trailer and the the sky. I think that's maybe a little bit more common sense of something. And again, like I said, we have precedent in other areas where the same kind of thing happens for similar reasons. It's just, it's not automated. Um, automation is, is wonderful. It's incredible. It gives us a lot of great stuff, but a lot of it is, it's based in using the technology in a manner that actually like produces, uh, or it's productive rather than not productive. And it's easy to use any tool for that. Like I could just go around and smash ho holes in, in my wall with my hammer all I want. That's a misuse of a hammer. And, and the way that it works out is to use things the right way, A, and, and have people understand how it works, B. Yeah. Automa I, I automation is, uh, is, a double, is a double edged sword, right? I mean, yeah. I think about like if you drive a fairly late model car, you probably have a car that tries to guide you and keep you in the middle of the lane. Yes. Or it mm -hmm. autumn, or it, it senses drives me crazy. Actually, you've a, I, hate I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I turn I, mine I, off too. I, yeah. you, they don't always let you turn it off. Um, especially mine doesn't let me turn it off. Mine doesn't either. Oh. And, and, it, and if it lets you, if wow. you, and if you, I bet you could like get under the hood maybe and reprogram it if you were brilliant. But I couldn't. <laughs> but the point is, I can imagine situations in circumstances under which that could be dangerous. For example, let's say someone's bearing down on you and you want to punch the brake. And, and get out of their way, um, you know, and, and, but there's a vehicle in front of you and it, the, and it says it'll stop you because you're too close. That oh, wow. could end up getting rear-ended. And it's, so it's a, it's a positive, well, I mean, look, a, a seatbelt. Seatbelts generally save lives, right? I once, like my car once went into the Gulf of Mexico. I was really glad I was able to get that seatbelt off and get out of the car before it went blub, blub, blub. So mm -hmm. there's, everything is a double-edged sword. Oh, you're yeah. almost Teddy yeah. Kennedy it's style. technology, just in general. <laughs> to our, us Teds, we like to drive into the water. I will uh, say, uh, on the, on the, to wrap it up with my book, where reality, is, where profit is the driver. I'm going to put that up there. Yeah. This there we are. is a perfect example of that. Like, they're not thinking about the consequences of things. They're thinking about how they can make money. And how they can make money is by giving... Uh, uh, in the case of an AI chatbot app that emulates a character, is by giving the person with it the experience that they want. And mm -hmm. this person, this child, wanted uh, a romantic relationship with Daenerys right. Targaryen, which sounds absurd, but like ultimately the machine is programmed to give them what they want. That's profit, driving reality. It's not. It's good. not that absurd. I mean, it's no, basically, it's, it's just a form of pornography, right? I yes. mean, yeah, that's a good way of putting it, actually, yes. Hmm. But that's, I mean, that's what it is. It's profit driving the reality of this kid, in all seriousness. It's, it's, it's just playing into people's character. fantasy lives, which are yes. extremely important, and in many cases, very positive. Um, you know, I mean, we, 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 we wouldn't be human beings without fantasy, rich fantasy Absolutely. lives. And so, but this, it, it, preys on it and you know i mean you know even if we just assume that there's nothing nefarious that clearly short-term profits were part of the problem here absolutely yeah I, I feel like my dumb simple fix id everybody that you know with the no, that's not a dumb simple like fix. i don't think that's dumb at all maybe simple but not dumb a lot of stuff should be id'd really truly online oh yes yeah far more than just this <laughs> yeah like, like if you can't buy cigarettes, you know, a kid can't walk in to go buy cigarettes, then you shouldn't be able to, or forget cigarettes, walking into a porn shop or a strip club, if a kid can't do that to live out his teenage fantasy, then he maybe shouldn't be able to just log on and, you know, 
download an app, you know, so that could do this because they're this this is like that AI threat that people people that are are like me that are not, you know, super techie are kind of fearful about because we read stuff like this and we go, holy crap, like, it's like AI, is gonna, AI is going to kill us. That's <laughs> this is to, as Alvin Toffler would call it. This is future shock. Yes. But here's the other thing to think about. Is it AI killing you or is it a person who's programming AI killing you? That's correct. Cool. It's ultimately like the driver of the car is the person who runs it into the wall or the pedestrian or whatever. Guns don't kill doesn't. people. Yeah. Right. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. That's, that's <laughs> well, true. It, I mean, that it is, is true. true. They have to choose to use it that way and or right. negligently use it in a manner that harms someone. And, but it's and like I, it's like gun control. You can mitigate. You can't eliminate the harm. You can right. exactly. mitigate it, though. You right. could say, for example, you know, we but want smaller, right smaller now, capacity magazines. Blah blah blah. Yeah, but it's well, the that, wild that, west. It's exactly, and that's if we think about it the way that it is, though, where it's it's people driving it, then it's people that can be uh, influenced or regulated. Like people have to do things a certain way to get more safety in our overall um, AI mm -hmm. environment. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and certainly the dinosaurs on Capitol Hill who don't even know how Facebook works. Yeah. Facebook that oh was boy. so like 15 years ago. They're the ones trying to regulate this. So I think that's really funny. So they need to call up people like you, Peter, seriously, yes. to consult with. Congressional hearings. Yes. I would love to do hearings. That would be hilarious. That would make so many people so mad. If I was <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that out there into the universe. I'm just saying, <laughs> putting that out there into the universe for Peter Coffin to testify on Capitol Hill about regulating AI because I, I feel I'm like all for it. Put it I'm yeah, all you for put it. it in a way that even I understood. So that's I appreciate that very much. Thank you. This was amazing. So, Peter. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh, thank you so thank much you for this very conversation. Much. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna put the book up there one more time so that way everybody can go check out Peter's book available right now on Amazon. You guys go get it. Peter Coffin's book, Custom Reality and You. Peter Coffin, of course, is the author of that book and uh, a YouTuber with a lot of viewers. We're going to have to pick Peter's brain about that, too. Uh, so <laughs> go check out Peter's book. Thank you so much for this conversation, Peter. We hope to have you back. Of course. Thank you a ton. Thanks, Peter. Great. Thank you. Clovis loved you. Bye. Boy, that's I learned a lot. And I hope the viewers did, too.